And I'm here at Avaya Engage with one of my favorites, Mark Fletcher from Inform. 911 Inform. Mark, how are you? I'm doing great, Evan. It's great to sit down with you as always. I was just saying to somebody this morning, I got to find Evan. It's been two <laughs> days and I haven't seen Evan yet. <laughs> well, you're a, you're a fan of mine. I'm a fan of yours. You're an OG podcaster. When did you start content creation podcasting? What year was that? It was actually in 2009. I started playing around with it. Then I had the brain aneurysm, took my six-week vacation in a coma. So I really launched everything in early 2010. And it, you, were, uh, you were a man ahead of its time. Also in the 911 emergency services space, you have just an amazing biography. For folks who don't know your body of work, Maybe go back to the beginning and, and some of the important work you've done personally and professionally. Well, it was a small winter day in October in New Jersey when I was born. No, the, <laughs> I, uh, I started out right out of high school as a dispatcher at my local police department. Wow. Went on the road as a special officer and I worked there for five years. Uh, I was number one on the list to go full time, but that wasn't going to be happening. And I've always had IT technology in my bloodstream. So I said, now nope, I got to get out of here. I got to do something. I went into IT and uh, telephony and communications and very quickly migrated back to doing that for public safety. So since the early 80s, I've been involved in telecom for public safety. And you've seen and participated in some huge leaps in public safety, including testifying in front of Congress. Tell us about your work there, because we're all talking tech, but it's not just tech, right? It's public policy, it's people, it's tech that have to come together. You're absolutely right. And when I was a technician at Bell Atlantic, I used to program the old Nortel systems to allow 911 by itself and 9911 and to do the notifications. I'm like, why wouldn't you? And uh, what was difficult or impossible back then was the long distance routing. Hmm. We really didn't have remote workers back then, but if you had a building with tie lines and two towns, that could be problematic, and there was no solution for that. Um, as I went to work for Nortel, um, I started looking at the legislative front and trying to raise awareness. And unfortunately, Carrie Hunt, uh, which was really the icon behind all of this, on December 1st of 2013, she died in a hotel because her nine-year-old daughter couldn't dial 911. So sad. She was dialing nine, or dialing 911 by itself, tried four times. The sad part is, the coroner testified that Carrie lived for 20 to 30 minutes. And 911 wasn't even called for 22 minutes. So here's someone who would have survived had this little piece of programming been in place. And there's just no legislation around any of it. So I, I worked with the Hunt family, and uh, we got in front of Congress, and it was just six years of educating the industry uh, and everyone we could talk to. And uh, on the 50th anniversary of the very first 911 call in the United States, uh, which was February 16, 1968, we were in the Oval Office when the president signed Kerry's law as the law of the land. One of the proudest days of my life. Well, it was wonderful work and you continue the great work. Um, maybe talk about the landscape today. On one hand, we have so many advancements in technology and apps and devices for public safety. On the other hand, we have this very fragile system and network. So from your perspective, where are we? What's the landscape and where do we need to be? Well, you know, you've described it perfect, perfectly because it's the fragility of the E911 network. Because you're dealing with 1968 technology, that was refreshed in the 80s, a little bit of updates in the 90s, but fairly stagnant, all legacy analog based. I, I liken this to the migration from analog and digital to IP. Everyone was afraid of it. No one wanted to touch it. There was, there was all kinds of concerns and valid concerns. 911 is going through that same evolution. We don't need to use the analog based technology anymore. We can use digital IP based technology. Those boundaries that existed and those barriers can be easily torn down. I can have a call taker in California answering a call in New Jersey. Do I want that happening all the time? Probably not. There's local knowledge. 
But if New Jersey is in the middle of exploding and I need to get someone to answer the call, I've got the entire country that can do that, put that into a national network where the information collected can be immediately shared with the agency through any medium. And that's where NextGen is moving. Canada actually has their NextGen 911 network deployed across the country. Three major 911 centers have rolled it out end to end. And uh, they've announced they're shutting off the legacy E911 network in about two years. Wow, uh, scary times, interesting times for technologists. And speaking of that, tell us about 911 Inform. What, what's the mission uh, at 911 Inform? What's your, what's your value proposition here at Avaya Engage? Well, you know, we started out as a school safety company providing, oh, nice. you know, resources for schools, for 911 calls, panic buttons, alarms, different things. And we very quick, when I came on board, we very quickly branched out to widen that use case out to all of the enterprises because everyone has similar problems. Schools have unique problems, uh, but the technology that we've developed, it's about collecting all of the data that exists in the IoT networks. Panic buttons, temperature sensors, video cameras, shot spotters, facial recognition cameras, license plate readers. So now, if I have a parent who's not supposed to be in my parking lot in a school, I catch their license plate as they enter, the video camera verifies through facial recognition, and if they want to invest in the technology, they can have millimeter wave detection, like the airport, I can spot a weapon under clothing 200 yards away. Not my technology, but that's the signaling device at the far end. I found an event, and it's not kosher. We bring that all together, and the magic that we provide is we put that together on a single pane of glass, and we deliver it not only to the local entity, the business, but we found a way to extend that directly to public safety, where the dispatcher, the patrol cars, the fire truck, and the ambulance, you can literally walk in the door with a floor plan and access to video cameras in your hand. And then when the incident's over, it's all wiped from the cash. So important, much needed uh, technology these days. Uh, and here at Avaya, it must be like a family reunion for oh, you, God. friends and family, customers. Uh, how's the, uh, the week been? I can't walk down the hallway, <laughs> but it's great. It is, it is such a big ego boost from past colleagues to past, past bosses, good and bad, because we, can, <laughs> we all laugh about it now. And uh, you know, it's just fun to catch up with everybody and see where they've gone and grown. And you know, love of I, hate of I, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it bred an industry and a family of people and bonds with people. And that's what the industry is really about. Yeah, it's about. all about the people, and great people. And that's what I love about it. And um, thanks so much for chatting, always a delight. I love sitting down with you <laughs> because you know, you're one person I could talk to that I can go to any level and you get it and you give me great ideas oh, too. Oh, thanks so much, the feeling is mutual. Thanks, Mark. No problem.